Hi AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here with our final video over linear approximation. We're going to talk a little bit more about errors, but this particular problem is a little bit different. So let's take a look. So as we can see, the question reads, for the tangent line to the graph of f of x equal x squared minus 3x plus 5, add x equal 4 to have an error of at most point 1 when approximating f of 4 plus h, find the range of values for h. So things are a little bit different now. We basically know how far off our approximation is going to be, point 1. We want to figure out what kind of number would we be approximating in this function to make that error happen? It's going to be some number probably pretty close to 4. What are we going to add to the 4 or subtract from the 4 to establish a range that would give us that error? Now, you're going to start this problem very similar to the ones that we've already talked about in example 1 and 2. Your job is to find the equation of a tangent line, and that hasn't changed. So we're going to take the derivative of our function, which is 2x minus 3, and we're going to evaluate that derivative at the x in which we are given. So we find that 2 times 4 minus 3, of course, is going to be 5. So there's our slope. And as always, we will find the y value, or the f value, on our curve by plugging 4 in for x. So we end up with 16 minus 12 plus 5, which I believe would be 9. So we have all of the makings for our tangent line. So let's write it. y minus the y value of 9 equals the slope 5 multiplied by x minus the given x value of 4. And in typical fashion, you know what we do. We solve for the y, change his name to L of x, and we find ourselves here. So where do we go next? Well, typically at this point, we were given a very specific value at which we were going to find our function but we're not given a very specific value. We want to approximate f of 4 plus h. And so that's just fine. We can do that. We can use that particular linear equation to do our approximation. So I'm going to make a heading here and call it approximation. And I will take my f of 4 plus h and proclaim that that is approximately equal to l of 4 plus h which of course would give me 9 plus 5 times the quantity 4 plus h minus 4. Now, we can't reduce that to some numerical quantity, so we have to deal with the variable that's present and just simplify as best we can, and really the 4s cancel, and that's really about all we can do. 9 plus 5h would be our approximation. Now, if you remember back to what error means. In video two, we talked about how the error is just simply the absolute value of your approximation minus your exact. And I could even throw that in down here. So we're talking the absolute value of the approximation minus the exact. Or I could flip this around and say exact minus approximation. It really doesn't make any difference. The reason why I switched it is because I think that this is the way that I presented it in the last video, so I wanted to be consistent. Another word for exact might be actual value. Another word for approximate might be estimated. So you need to look for words like that that are synonyms. So let's go ahead and find our exact value which is kind of interesting because this is a problem in which we can truly do that for a variety of reasons. Number one, we don't have a real complicated function. I mean, we could pretty much plug in any number for that and wouldn't really need a calculator. I mean, it might be kind of a pain to plug a decimal in there, but we could do it. But we're not plugging in a decimal. We're plugging in our f of 4 plus h. So let's figure out what is f of 4 plus h. 
So we replace all of these x's with our 4 plus h. And as you can probably predict, we do need to simplify this. Probably the worst thing that's going to happen in this problem is that we would have to expand or FOIL, as we sometimes say, this binomial. In doing so, you get 16 plus 4h and 4h, which is 8h, plus h squared there at the end. Next, we will distribute our 3. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times h is 3h, but the negative goes along as well. And we follow up with our plus 5. When we combine like terms, we end up with h squared plus 5h, and then 16 minus 12 is 4 plus 5 is 9. And that's going to be our exact value. So let's go ahead and finish up. We were told that our error, which is the absolute value of the exact, minus the approximate. You see what we're doing here? We're still subtracting these quantities. It's just that they're not numerical. We're used to them being numerical, but they're not numbers anymore because we've been asked to find this h. And then we remember that the error is supposed to be at most 0 0.1. Now we have to understand that that is an inequality. And the inequality that it stands for is a less than or equal to. A great way to think about this. If you're watching this video, you know, maybe, maybe you're a high school student. Maybe you're about 17 years old. Let's say that you are at most 17 years old. Well, that means that maybe some of you might be 16. Some of you may very well be 17, but you won't be more than 17. All right, we'll finish this up. And you notice that a lot of things cancel away. The 5H and the 9, namely. Next, the absolute values can disappear. Now, let's think about why, why, is it, why is it that the absolute values disappear? Well, h squared is already positive, so there's really no need to throw absolute values around a number that's already positive. And so all that you're left to do is to solve this fairly simple quadratic inequality. But these things can be a little tricky, so you've got to be kind of on your toes there. A lot of times I'll tell students who have trouble solving these is to think about an easier problem that has a perfect square. Like if h squared was less than or equal to 9, what are all the numbers that would make this inequality true? And kids will just start spewing out 2, 1, 0, 3. And then I talk about, well, what about the negative numbers? And after a while, we would all agree that that's the solution. And so basically, what you would do is just take the square root of what's on the right side, use the plus or minus of its answer, and let those two values serve as your inequalities. And that's that simple. Now, for this particular problem, we need to know what is the square root of 0.1. Let's go to the calculator and check that out. And here I go. And all I'm going to do here is just take the square root of 0 0.1 and Let's go ahead and round this to three decimal places. So 0 0.316. We'll return to the document. And now we're going to take that 0 0.316. We'll make it negative, place it on the left side of the inequality, and then place it on the right side of the inequality. And of course, we're going to use a pair of less than or equal to symbols. And that's going to be your solution here. You found the value of h that makes the error at most 0.1. Now, if this was some kind of a numeric value, basically what you're doing is if you wanted to approximate something by using the tangent line, you're safe using anything from 4.316 back to, oh, you guys are going to make me do this, 3.684, I believe, would be the range of values that you could plug in for this x, compute through the approximation, and have an error that's at most 0.1. Hopefully this helps a little bit. It's a little different version 
of our linear approximation problems. It's probably not so much an AP style question, but it's certainly a college level type of Calc 1 question that I've seen uh, in many textbooks and with some of the kids that I've worked with and tutored at the college level. We have some videos coming up for our future and final topic over L'Hopital's rule with Unit 4. We want you to make sure that you check those out. And as always, we thank you for joining.